Hi guys, welcome back to 4 Drivers Life. Today I'm going to show you the comparison between my Toyota Tundra and your friend's Jeep Gladiator. Yes. As always, we're going to go through this V-notch and then Rolling Rock and then the Flex Test. The Tundra V-notch footage is from two months ago when it was drier so that it's relatively easier. However, you can still see the articulation difference between the two trucks. Please remember how big the wheel gap is on the driver's side. Um, and then you will be able to compare the Jeep Gladiator's wheel gap here at the maximum flex. And please do know that for this V-notch footage, the Tundra did it when it's not raining. So it's relatively less muddy, however it's still kind of challenging. But definitely not as difficult as when it's raining, which is when the Jeep Gladiator did it. Here you can see the tires are aired down to 18 PSI. I also upgraded my tire from the KO2s in this footage to the Geolander MT mud terrain tires. I will be doing a comparison review of the, uh, both tires in the same terrain so that you'll get an idea of how uh, each tire performs in different kind of uh, surface conditions. When it's dry, this off-camber climb is uh, still kind of sketchy for my Tundra. And at, at this moment on the driver, in, uh, in the driver's seat, it, it felt like the truck was about to tip over. Now it's Jeep Gladiator's turn. It was raining really hard, so please take that into consideration. The Jeep Gladiator has around 3 inch lift and is on 37 inch tall mud terrain tires. The Jeep Gladiator is not a Rubicon trim level, however, the driver did have the manual, uh, manually disconnected front sway bar, which is why you are seeing a super flexy front axle. Remember that wheel gap from my Tundra? This is much bigger. And by this time, the rain and the previous vehicles has almost destroyed that off camber climb at the end of this V notch crossing. And the Jeep just didn't care. It made it up that so easy without any hiccup. <laughs> I would probably never try that on my Tundra, just saying. Now is the Rolling Rock Hill challenge. The Jeep Gladiator on 37s, about 3 4 inch lifted, is, should be pretty easy. However, it was just raining the day before we went to the park, so it it's not it didn't felt it didn't feel as easy as it should be, since it's the driver's first time trying the hill, so we didn't want to have him send it or anything, uh, so we just try to crawl up if possible. At right here, the, the the goal is to keep as passenger as possible so that it can climb up without uh, meeting that huge rock right by the driver's side. Uh, as you can see here, the vehicle was trying to grab but didn't have enough traction. So I had him uh, adjust the steering to the passenger and tried it again and finally he was able to make it. Here is my Tundra's turn. As you see here, we got the Geolander MT tires. It's 35 by 12 and a half and you can see how big the rock is because there is barely any gr uh, ground clearance left for my Tundra to be on the, uh, this climb and that Jeep Gladiator just had a lot more clearance. The loose rock really gave me a problem and as you can see here there's a huge slab of rock. I slowly crawled it up but I totally forgot to take it easy when I let when I pass it. And it hit my slider real hard. Then it got wedged into a uh, place between my gas tank and rear differential. I'm really glad I got the RCI skip place for all of them. Okay, here comes the last section of the Rolling Rock Hill. Due to the width of the Tundra, I was not able to fit through the passage on the passenger side. So I had to crawl up that rock, which is very impressive. Uh, I had problem crawling up that rock with my KO2s. But on this Geolander mud terrain G03 had no problem. Yeah. Lastly, we have the articulation comparison. 
both vehicles are going through this uh, bank, really tall bank, to test out the articulation of your suspension. I don't know what it is, but my vehicle started to squeak like crazy here, or clicks like crazy, and uh, I'm thinking it's possibly the uh, skip plate that's rubbing against the frame when the vehicle's flexed. Then it's the Jeep Gladiator's turn. It really felt more like a flat ground here. Um, didn't even skip a beat. All right, that's it for the comparison. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below of which one do you think did better and which one would you take on your overland journey. And as always, please like and subscribe. Have a good one.